Miss LaBelle. Hmm. The one and only. One and only, indeed. Welcome to the Frostbite's Queen. A little sweet we got out here. Just to ask you a couple things. You know what I'm saying? That's crossing your mind. I want Jack Frostbite. Mm. And, uh, yeah. You're real cute, Mr. Frost. All right. I'm going to get you in trouble. <laughs> <laughs> Baby That's LaBelle true. always in trouble. Oh, uh, is that right? Raising no about this? Uh, yeah, he got a little taste. You know, that's why he, um, he went. Now, see, it's something I've noticed about you, girl. Um, the fact that, you know, a lot of women that Kyrie comes in contact with, you really quick to let them know about, you know, his sexual appetite. Now, does it worry you that he's, you know, so promiscuous? No. Mm. <laughs> Let me tell you something about my son. My son been throwing that thing forever. Mm -hmm. I feel like you just gotta introduce him to the right kind of cat mm -hmm. so he don't roll up on the wrong one. So it's their fault if they deal with his ass. At the end of the day, it ain't my problem or my fault. I can understand that. Now, there's a lot that has, that has happened, that has happened to uh, your family when it comes to, you know, Kari, your brother. Um, how deeply does self guilt affect you? See, I ain't coming for this shit now, Mr. Frost. I don't want to answer these kind of questions. But because I'm here, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to heal you. Guilt don't usually bother me. Because I got to let that shit go. Mm -hmm. But after my brother Dre died, I hit me a little bit. And I had to be strong for everybody. Right, I mean, you know, with dealing with something like that, like how do you keep from not allowing it to eat you alive? I gotta stop and think about myself. Cause at the end of the day, everybody else gonna live this life without me. So I gotta make sure I don't let nobody eat me alive, shit. I mean, you got one life to live. Why live it and regret? Facts. So, now, many will argue that the black home is, you know, broken, especially when it comes to single parent households. But what are your thoughts on, you know, such, you know, beliefs? You know what I noticed? If you in a house and it looked like it's broken, it ain't always as broke as people think. When you got a house that looks so perfect. People love to look outside on the inside. But let me tell you something. Sometimes the homes look so perfect on the inside and it's as broken as a house that looks broken. That's where the real togetherness starts. In that broken house. It's healing in a broken house if you allow it. But them homes that look like they're so perfect, baby, don't be fooled by them smoke mirrors. Now, if it's something that you brought up, you know, I've noticed that you brought up about bringing somebody down some stairs. Like, what is it like? Is it something that we missing that you don't even know? Let us know. She, she deserved that shit. Who is she? Y'all don't need to know that. Why y'all always in, you know y'all interview was always in somebody's damn business. I mean, you kind of put it out there for us to like, you know, ask those type of questions, you know? Let's just say, she was somebody I trusted. Mm. But she turned her back on me. And when you turn your back on me, and treat me like shit, and think you are gonna get away with it, oh yeah, bitch, I'm gonna drag your ass down two flights of stairs, cause you deserved it. Now it looks like you've been giving Shaman some of this advice like uh should she come across a similar type of woman you know hell yeah i did way. yeah i feel the same because you know what some people need see shama she a good girl mm -hmm. see she tried to play hard but she ain't hard as she thinks she is she gotta get that she gotta earn that shit. but until she do that she need to learn <laughs> you gonna have to muster up some of this here and you gonna have to roll up on whoever giving you a problem and show her ass if it's yours it's yours if you're going to take that shit, take that shit. And once you get it, baby, you better learn how to keep it. Now, this is the same mentality that you use, you know, to keep raising the line, like, you know, use you know, a similar type of approach. It depends on what you're talking about now, baby. No, no. We on some grown woman shit now. Yeah, definitely. Well, for my little razor, what I like to do is give him a little combination, you know, a little mm -hmm. combo. You know, every once in a while, I'm gonna have to reel a man with a little manhandling, you know what I'm saying? Cause the men know they really like somebody to take control sometimes. 
But Razor, he really know how to get into my skin and really just make me feel like a real woman. You know what I'm saying? Now, how about you, Mr. Because he's been around your son for a while, so. Like, where did this whole, you know, attraction come about? I'm going to be honest with you. I ain't never seen Raven like that. Until it was one time, he just grew up. And when I saw him, I saw him in a different light. But you did. I did. Mm -hmm. And I just don't know what happened. I never intended to be with Raven. He never was attracted to me. And then one day, he just gave me that look. You know that look. Yeah, so. And I just fell into this trap. So, once you figured out what you felt towards Raven, when did it like occur in your mind? Like, how am I going to tell Kyrie this? Like, what was the feeling or the thought process? Shit. Huh. I don't even know. I ain't, I'm going to be honest with you. I didn't even think about coming. Mm. Shit, Kyrie don't think about me. He don't come by, he don't see me like he used to. No, he's got a full plate for things that did. He do. I mean, it did cross my mind. He might be a little bothered. But then I thought to myself, you know him. You grew up with him. It should be all right. Nah, I don't really think that kind of, that how it processes in a man's mind. I mean, he came up out of there. So Razor to be the one to, you know, do what he does down there. It's, it's a whole nother, you know, understanding. Well, you know, at the end of the day, Kari my son. And if he told me he was that uncomfortable, I couldn't be with Racing. And that's real shit. So I guess we just gonna have to see how he feel having Razor around more often. Now I'm about to take it somewhere with you as far as like your mentality. Now, some of the things that you and Kyrie been through, as far as Dre is concerned, kind of really fractured the family. Like I know at some point, Kyrie wanted your protection. As crazy as it might have seemed, I mean, he's going up against your brother, his uncle, but he wanted some form of protection. I would imagine while going through that. What was your thought process in dealing with that? You mean dealing with it back then? Or right now? Back then. My thought process dealing with it back then was uh, sacrifice. And I sacrificed so much more than just myself. And I just thought, just take my baby, I just would give myself to my brother to save him. But in doing that, I sacrificed my soul. I sacrificed my dignity. And then sometimes I sacrificed my sin. And people talk so much crap about what you should have done and what you shouldn't do. The day not all in it, when you're in it, it's different. And I was all up in that shit. And all I could think about was protecting my son from my brother, who used to do the same damn thing to me. So how did it feel when, you know, it ended up with him being abused as well? Like, did you feel some form of like failure or something like that? Yes. Yes. Felt like I failed my son again. And nobody, I don't care who it is, nobody wants to know that. But when I think back to how I tried to protect him, I was hoping that he would just understand, but he was, was too young. It's too young. But Mrs. Bell, I appreciate you, you know, following through the Frost Bites corner. Mm -hmm. And uh, we definitely look forward to seeing more of you and everything else that goes along with you. Mm -hmm. So uh, it's been a pleasure. Pleasure is all mine. Mm -hmm.